I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering and today we shall discuss about this cycle that is reheat cycle. In fact, we have discussed about this cycle in the last class and in continuation of that discussion, today we shall go for the analysis and little more of this particular cycle. So, if you try to recall, we have discussed about the Rankine cycle as well as several modifications of the Rankine cycle. So, if we try to you know write again what are those modifications? Modifications are so modifications of ideal ranking cycle one is lowering the condenser pressure number 2 is increasing the boiler pressure and number 3 is superheating the steam beyond a particular point that is beyond point 3. So, you know all these three modifications we have discussed essentially to have higher thermal efficiency. Nevertheless, we have also discussed about the demerits of every such modification in the context of the you know smooth and travel free operation of the plant as well as the obligation of having higher thermal efficiency. What are those? You know we have seen that perhaps by lowering the condenser pressure we can achieve higher thermal efficiency, but doing this we are going to invite another problem that is the quality of steam at the exit of the turbine becomes very poor. So, it is it is not acceptable not only that in addition to the quality of steam at the exit of the turbine most importantly we cannot really reduce the you know condenser pressure drastically, because mostly condens condensers are operated at a pressure which is below atmospheric pressure. So, if we reduce more then perhaps leakage of air from the surroundings into the condenser will be there and this air which is getting leaked into the condenser will create a resistance for an efficient heat transfer between the flowing streams that is steam and water. So, this is not suitable. If we look at the second one that is increasing boiler pressure, we have seen that if we if we somehow can design a boiler to operate at a higher pressure, perhaps we can increase the efficiency, but, but again we need to compromise the quality of the steam at the exit. Last one superheating the steam, we also I mean by, by, by adopting this particular modification we can increase the efficiency as well as the quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine becomes you know uh, you know high I mean it is it is not very poor. So, so it is it is quite you know uh, I can say important to go with this particular modification, but we have discussed that you know we cannot superheat steam beyond a particular limit because that that is restricted by the metallurgical consideration of the blade. So, if we rule out this particular that this is not uh, you know feasible way, even if we go for the second and third one, we have seen that these options are not the viable option for the enhancement of the thermal efficiency of the power plant. So, why not idea is why not to look into the combination of these two. So, if we can increase 
the boiler pressure that means, if we allow the plant to operate rather if we allow boiler to operate at a higher pressure together with if we go for superheating the steam perhaps the problem associated with the reduction in the quality of steam at the turbine exit can be increased by if we superheat the steam and at the same time if we operate the boiler at a higher pressure we can achieve higher thermal efficiency. So, idea is to you know combine these two uh, options and to have a particular cycle. So, you know to this end reheat cycle aims at attaining a high thermal efficiency by making use of the high boiler pressure as well as superheating the steam, but at the same time eliminating the expected probability of you know uh, reduction of the steam quality at the exit, but you know operating the of you know plant at a temperature which will allow us not to go for any uh, you know problem of the turbine blade cracking etcetera. So, this is what is reheat cycle. So, if we write reheat cycle, so these cycles aims at attaining higher thermal efficiency by utilizing higher boiler pressure and superheating the steam. So, this is all about the reheat cycle. So, basically you know that we are going from the Carnot one to the Rankine simple Rankine cycle ideal Rankine cycle. We have identifying several issues involved with the simple Rankine cycle we have you know looked at the modifications and then having discussed about each and every modification we have critically discussed about the disadvantageous feature. Now, we have found that perhaps the first one is not a viable option at all even second and third one uh, these two options are not also viable options, but we can use the combination of these two essentially to have high, ther high thermal efficiency, but eliminating the problem associated with you know poor quality of steam at the exit as well as we can operate the turbine uh, at a high temperature without having any problem related to you know thermal crack generation inside the blade in the blade. So, this is essentially the reheat cycle. So, now if we go to the next slide and if we discuss about little bit of this particular uh, cycle. So, that is reheat cycle. So, idea is we will be designing a plant in which boiler will operate at a high pressure also you need to go for superheating the steam. By how it is you know uh, accomplished you know this to accomplish this uh, what is done steam is allowed to expand in two stages. So, there are two different you know turbines one is high pressure turbine and another one is the low pressure turbine. In high pressure turbine steam will be allowed to expand isentropically at the exit of the high pressure turbine steam will be taken for reheating through a separate coil in the boiler and that reheating will be done at an intermediate pressure and after reheating that reheat temperature would be approximately to the approximately to the uh, same temperature as it was done before entering into the turbine I mean the high pressure turbine and this reheat steam will be again allowed to go into the low pressure turbine wherein again steam will expand isentropically to the condenser pressure. So, let us briefly draw I mean let us draw the schematic 
diagram of such a cycle and then we shall discuss. So, if we draw over here, so this is the boiler. So, this So, this is condenser and so this is low pressure turbine, this is high pressure turbine and from the condenser again So, this is what is the concept. And so, this is what is the concept. You know, let us identify the state. This is two, this is three, four. 5 then 6. So, you can see let me write here this is high pressure turbine and this one is low pressure turbine. Okay. So, you know that uh, this is the concept what is this is you know different than what uh, we have what, a, what a, you know the cycles we have discussed so far till now. So, the, this this schematic is different in one you know aspect that is here the steam from the boiler will be taken into the high pressure turbine, steam will expand isentropically at the exit from the high pressure stage turbine will be that steam will be directed to a heating coil that is placed in the boiler and while steam is passing through the boiler uh, passing through this heating coil which is placed inside the boiler it will be reheated again and that reheated steam will be taken will be taken to the low pressure stage turbine wherein again the st again steam will expand isentropically and it will it will be allowed to expand up to the condenser pressure and the remaining part is as usual so basically we can see that the condenser that you know condensate will be collected and again pumped back to the boiler so this is basically you know so this is the place where we will be having you know a q out. So, I shall write in. So, I will erase it and I will write this is q out, this is q in and this is w in. So, again I am telling idea is 
steam will expand isentropically in the first stage that is high pressure turbine. So, steam will expand isentropically in high pressure stress turbine and this expansion will continue at an intermediate pressure. So, you can understand steam is getting expanded. So, this as steam is expanded in the high pressure stress turbine, this expansion process will continue at an intermediate pressure. So, steam will expand isentropically in high pressure stress turbine up to an intermediate pressure. So, this is not the condenser pressure right. Then the steam will be taken after expansion after expansion in the HPT in high pressure stress turbine, steam will be rooted to the reheating coil placed inside the boiler. So, this is uh, the coil, okay. so this is you know and while steam is taken to this reheating coil. So, uh, let, let me write here. So, this is reheat coil okay. and then this steam after heating. So, this heating is continued approximately equal to the same temperature at it was having at state point C. So, this is very important you know steam is let me write. So, steam is reheated approximately equal to the original superheat temperature. Okay. Finally, the reheated steam is allowed to expand isentropically in the low pressure stage termine and this process continues up to the condenser pressure. Okay. So, this is all about the processes and you can understand the remaining processes are as usual. So, we have seen. So, up to the condenser pressure. So, again it will come to the condenser exchanging heat with the uh, coolant which is which will be circulated uh, into the condenser that con, you know collected condensate will be pumped back to the boiler. So, this is the usual process we have discussed. So, if we now draw the T s diagram which is very important. So, if we draw the T s diagram right. So, if we draw the T s diagram 
which is very important. So, you know if we draw the process, so this is the condenser pr pressure, P condenser. If we go back to the previous slide, so you know that this is the state point 1, wherein the thermodynamic state of the working substance is saturated liquid. So, this is 1 and this is pumped to the boiler. So, objective is the pressure will increase and the boiler is operating at a high pressure, because that is what our objective was to combine these two you know modifications. So, that uh, we can have you know uh, high thermal efficiency without having the reduction in the quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine. So, now, so say this is the boiler pressure. So, this is 0.2 and this is the boiler pressure. So, this is 0.3. Now, we are using this two. So, we are allowing the boiler to operate at a high pressure as well as superheating the steam beyond 0.3. Superheating the steam beyond 0.3 that means, we are superheating steam beyond 0.3. Then steam is going into the high pressure stress turbine and it does work. So, you know these two turbines are connected to a common shaft. So, while doing work while expanding in the high pressure stress turbine it does work on the rotating part of the machine and steam after doing work it is taken to this reheating coil. So, this expansion in the high pressure stress turbine takes place up to an intermediate pressure. So, this expansion say this is an intermediate pressure. If I if I uh, erase it and if I use another color to represent it, say this is an intermediate pressure. And this steam is reheated in this coil, what I have written you know approximately equal to the original superheat temperature. So, it is reheated up to this approximately equal. So, if I give a line over here, so this is the reheating temperature. So, this is basically 3 you know 4 this is. So, this is 4 this point is 4, this point is 5 and then steam is you know allowed to expand steam is allowed to expand. So, intermediate pressure and steam is allowed to so this is 6. So, now I will erase this part that will help you to understand. So, if I erase it, so this is the case just I am connecting like this. So, question is so, we are utilizing high boiler pressure superheating the steam, but what we are doing? We are doing this rather to accomplish this, we are now using two different stress turbine. What is uh, important to note that you know that if we are allowing steam to expand in the high pressure stress turbine isentropically up to the condenser pressure, in that case the quality of the steam 
will be so this is 6 prime. So, this is x 6 and this is uh, So, this is x 6 prime. So, you can understand quality of steam is getting rather becoming higher if we super if we reheat steam also we can have higher thermal efficiency because you can understand W net is getting increased. So, you know this is the extra amount of work W net we are getting because of this reheating. So, this is delta W net. So, if we allow steam to expand in the high pressure stress turbine up to the condenser pressure, quality of the steam will be x 6 prime. So, x 6 prime is definitely less than x 6. So, basically what we can see, we can increase the quality of the steam at the exit of the low pressure stress turbine. Not only that, we also can increase the efficiency that is delta W net is getting increased that is clearly visible from this stage diagram. So, this is the practice what is commonly followed in the modern steam power plant. Now, we can see we have drawn only one reheating stage. It is also possible to have multiple reheating stage. If we can have multiple such stages, then perhaps efficiency can be increased even better. So, for a given or single reheat, single reheat stage efficiency increases by 4 to 5 percent. So, if we by, by having only single reheat stage, we can increase efficiency by 4 to 5 percent. Now, why if we try to look at, if we try to analyze why it is so. So, you know that by reheating the steam, we are essentially increasing the average temperature at which heat is added in the cycle. So, if we try to go back to the previous classes, thermal efficiency will you know uh, increase if we increase the average temperature at which it is added to the higher temperature part of the cycle. So, by reheating the steam, it is, it is because of such a complex arrangement, we are increasing the average temperature at which it is added to the cycle and due to this, we can have this amount of increase in thermal efficiency. So, by having a single reheat, we can increase efficiency by 4 to 5 percent. But now, you may ask me a question, why can't we go for multiple reheating stage? It is recommended that, uh, I mean we can go for multiple reheat stage, but 2 to 3 reheat stages are recommended. Why? See, if we again draw the TS diagram, so if we write it, you can see, so if we have such a you know multiple reheating stage, essentially, so this is the T average reheat. Right. So, if we increase multiple reheat stages, average temperature at which it is added to the cycle will increase and the efficiency will increase. But why then it is uh, it is it is true that two to three reheat stages are recommended. Why this recommendation is there? Because if we go or if we keep on increasing the number of reheat stages, then you know if, if you look at this particular schematic, you can understand that for only one reheat stage, so many you know arrangements are needed. So, 
if we keep on increasing such rate stages, then additional cost involved with the mechanical component also their maintenance will not be justified by the increment in efficiency. So, let me tell you we can go for multiple reheating stages average temperature at which heat is added will be increased efficiency will increase, but two to three reheat stages are recommended why because the additional cost involved with the you know inclusion of one reheat stage will not be justified by the increase in efficiency that would be obtained. So, that is why it is seen that two to three reheat stages are recommended considering the cost involved with the uh, additional arrangement as well as the efficiency that we will be getting out of this. So, this is case. Now, so this is basically you know very important what you can understand is that if we go back to the previous slide. So, this is high boiler pressure just try to understand. So, this is we have we have discussed that we are going to combine these two modifications increasing high boiler pressure and superheating steam. So, if we you know now look at this particular you know T s diagram. So, basically you know that this is the high boiler pressure. So, uh, say this is 3 prime and this is 6 double prime. So, if I write now 1, 2, 3 prime, 6 double prime that is high boiler pressure. Now, 1, 2, 3 prime, 3, 6 prime that is high boiler pressure with reheating. So, we are going to utilize high boiler plus pressure as well as reheating. Even if we are going for another reheat stage, we are going to increase the average temperature. That means, we are increasing high boiler pressure to achieve the high thermal efficiency, but if we do not superheat the steam, then quality of the steam will be reduced. So, x 6 double prime is even less than x 6 prime. So, to increase the quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine, we need to go for superheating. So, idea is to combine these two modifications and that is uh, what the reheat cycle is. So, you know that we have discussed about the uh, operational aspects of this particular heat cycle. We have also discussed about critical issues. So, we have also discussed about beyond 2 to 3 reheat stages. Uh, I mean it is it is not economically, it is not advisable to go for uh, you know more than 2 to 3 reheat stages. But one important advantage is that you know that we are having same mass flow rate of steam for the given mass flow rate of steam we can increase the efficiency. So, that means we are getting higher work output. So, you know that uh, net amount of work output is becoming higher for, for a given mass flow rate of steam. So, it is uh, you know it, it this this you know signifying that specific steam consumption will be low and the plant will be smaller. So, basically if the plant is smaller the initial cost would be less. So, for a given mass flow rate of steam we are increasing the efficiency by increasing this depth w net delta w net. So, that signifying the low SSC that means for a given work output it, it requires low I mean less mass flow rate of the steam. Now, you know having discussed about this particular reheat cycle I would say that if it is possible you know that uh, taking steam from the high pressure stress turbine also the steam which is coming out from the high pressure stress turbine it is having huge enthalpy. So, we need to make we, we, we should make sure that while steam is in a again taken to the boiler enthalpy should not be you know lost. So, again it would be reheated in the boiler in this reheating coil and it will be taken back to the low pressure stress turbine. So, you know mechanical cost is involved instead of going this particular arrangement if it is possible to have a certain you know I mean a particular or special blade material which can withstand the same amount of temperature then perhaps 
it is not advisable to go with this heat cycle. So, the idea is if the turbine blade material can withstand high temperature, then there is no need of reheating the cycle. So, you know this is what I wanted to discuss today. With this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class with uh, another uh, cycle. Thank you. Thank you.